Harry's Wife, Part 100.27 Why Does She Lie? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Harry's wife, who has been attracting attention for quite some time, because every time she opens a mush, out comes a porky pie, a lie. More recently, however, these have turned from just lies into absolute cavernous whoppers. She's somebody who's regularly dealt in mistruths, the revision of history, and what ordinarily would be described as lies, but as of late, they've got bigger and more outrageous. This, of course, prompts many people to ask, why is she doing this? Why is she lying? And, of course, does she realise this is what she's doing? Remember, you're not dealing with a person who is a normal or an empath or is just narcissistic but not a narcissist who is telling lies. You're dealing with someone who is a narcissist. And therefore, when it comes to the telling of lies, there are extra considerations that are applicable. First of all, it's important to understand, as I've explained in my excellent video, The Truth, The Half Truth and Nowhere Near the Truth, that the narcissist can tell you the truth as you understand the truth to be. Where it serves our purposes, we will use the truth. In other instances, we will use half-truths, and often the narcissist will use lies. I recommend that you watch my video, The Truth, The Half Truth and Nowhere Near the Truth, to gain a deeper understanding of the way that a narcissist behaves. A quick example of the use of the truth is, for example, Piers Morgan. He calls out Harry's wife's behaviour using the truth of that in the way that I do, but both he and I are narcissists. The use of the truth serves our purposes. It enables us to assert control, draw fuel, and gain residual benefits. It therefore accords with three of the four prime aims. But why is it that Harry's wife lies? Quite simply, her narcissism compels her to do so. What it is important to understand is that there is no such thing as an objective reality. Many of you have all evolved in a similar way, so that your brains interpret what you hear, what you see, what you feel, what you taste, what you smell, in a similar way, and thus you all reach an accord on what, for instance, a tree looks like, or what a car sounds like. Of course, there will be instances where differences are exhibited, for example, in relation to some people saying, oh, I heard this sound, and somebody else said, no, I heard that. You may have seen on social media, there's an instance of somebody playing a video saying, you will hear what you read, and it talks about, I think, green needle or green brain and such like. And that's because your brain actually repeatedly lies to you or tricks you. Your brain loves certainty. Certainty means survival. Survival means that the species continues. And despite what you might think in terms of higher ideals, quite simply, the reason that we're all here is to propagate and expand and continue the species. Therefore, survival is something that is important to enable you to then continue to create more of Homo sapiens. To this end, your brain has evolved to want certainty. This is why, of course, when the narcissist gaslights you and engages in so many contradictory behaviours, it causes such a problem for you. And empathic people, moreover, really are dedicated to the pursuit of the truth. They can't just go, well, fuck it. They want to get to the truth of the matter. And driven by emotional thinking, this leads them into cul-de-sacs when dealing with the narcissist. Your brain wants certainty. And in order to do that, when it perceives things, it doesn't necessarily give you the exact outcome of what's there, but what is best for you to achieve certainty and, in essence, to keep you alive. Take, for example, one of our forebears who's in the grasslands, and out of the corner of eye, he sees a snake. He immediately retreats, thus saving himself from being bitten by something that might be poisonous. He survives. He then turns and looks back and sees that, actually, it wasn't a snake, but a stick. But at the time, he was absolutely certain that he saw a snake. And he did, because his brain made him see a snake. Because in that split-in moment, he didn't have time to go, ooh, what is it? 
because if it was a snake, he could have been bitten. And therefore, his brain didn't go for the exact accuracy. It went for the best outcome for him. This happens repeatedly to you. If you're being pursued by an assailant or predator, your vision naturally tunnels. It doesn't actually, but your vision tunnels to create the perception so that you're focused upon an exit rather than being distracted by, ooh, look, a PlayStation 5, or some Louboutin shoes so that you're motivated to decide that you'll be distracted by those things. And instead, by focusing on an exit through tunnel vision, you're more likely to survive when you're being chased by something or somebody that is going to inflict harm upon you. Accordingly, your brain wants certainty, and it does what's best for you. What is best for the narcissist? The prime aims, of course. The assertion of control, the drawing of fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. So the way that the narcissist's brain has evolved is to be developed so that it pursues those things. You, as a non-narcissist, don't pursue those things. The narcissist, for the most part unconsciously, because most, pass, most narcissists are unaware, pursues the prime aims unconsciously, a smaller number, including myself, pursue them actively and with awareness. Harry's wife is an unaware narcissist. And therefore, what is best for her? She needs to be able to assert control, nullify threats to control. She needs to draw fuel. She needs to gain character traits and residual benefits. Those are the needs of the narcissist, even though she doesn't know it. Accordingly, in order to ensure that the outcome is the best for her, her narcissism compels her to see with the reality of what you see differently. It causes her to remember things differently. It causes her to respond in a different fashion. Why? In order to achieve the prime aims. Accordingly, when she comes out with a comment to an interviewer, such as, I attended the Lion King premiere and one of the cast said to me that the people of South Africa celebrated when I married Harry in the same way as they did when Nelson Mandela was alive, her narcissism has compelled her to tell that whopper why. Well, first of all, to try and assert control over the listener and, of course, the people that would subsequently read the interview, but more importantly, to draw fuel. By coming out with something as outlandish and grandiose as that, the narcissism is guaranteed to get a response. The interviewer responds, thus providing fuel from a non-intimate secondary source. People around the globe, millions upon millions of them, have commented about the audacity of this observation. The narcissism doesn't care if people go, wow, that's brilliant. People in South Africa worshipped you like Nelson Mandela. You are truly amazing, Harry's wife. Or whether they say, get the fuck out of here. What a load of bunkum. That never happened. The point is, people are reacting. And a reaction is fuel. And therefore, the narcissism has done its job. By making her tell a lie, and a big one, it provokes reactions which means she gets lots of fuel. Therefore, she matters. Now, you might say to yourself, but hang on a moment, HG. That's all very well if people are going, oh, wow, Harry's wife, aren't you amazing? All of those people in South Africa really worshipped you. And, of course, we know there's a segment of her supporters that behave in that way. There's also a hell of a lot more people who turn around and say, didn't happen, what a load of nonsense. Who do you think you are coming out with that claptrap? How does that help her? Well, remember, it's still fuel. And even though it's challenge fuel, all that the narcissism then does is say, thank you very much for the fuel, I'll take that all day. And with regard to those of you that are doubting me or criticising me for it, I'll either indirectly assert control over you by complaining about you being haters and racists and misogynists, or I'll just dismiss you. And therefore, it's a little bit like the narcissist does something hugely unpopular but gets paid for it. They've got the money regardless, haven't they? And to all of their doubters and complainants, they just basically go, F you. I've got what I want. You don't matter. You're the little people. So the narcissism doesn't care that it's compelling her to tell a lie. And of course, the way that the narcissism functions because she's unaware, it can't let her know that she's telling a lie. Why? Because then she might not do it. She might hesitate. And if that happens, 
she isn't getting the prime aims, and the narcissism is designed to get those prime aims for her, come what may. Accordingly, narcissists lie repeatedly in order to attain the prime aims, but to the narcissist, it is their truth, because they are seeing the world differently to you. In the same way that your brain plays tricks on you to get the best outcome for you in the examples I gave you earlier, in effect, the narcissism plays tricks on the narcissist, creating an alternative reality, which the narcissist automatically buys into because they know no different, which enables them to get to those prime aims more effectively. So with Harry's wife, she's always told porky pies. We've seen them repeatedly, claiming that she was the one that persuaded Procter & Gamble to change things, when actually it was a class project, claiming that she scrambled in and out of a vehicle because the door wouldn't open, and we know that that was character trait acquisition, revision of history, and a porky pie because it was seen from a Catherine Zeta-Jones commercial. The allegations of racism were generated by her narcissism to cause a reaction and thus enable her to get all of that fuel. And so the lies have always been there, many of which we won't know about either. The ones that she tells Harry, the ones that she's mentioned to staff, the ones that she's mentioned to friends that haven't necessarily been reported on. And then, of course, what then happens is the lies become bigger and bolder. Why? Well, her narcissism doesn't care about what comes next. It just needs to get the reaction. She functions with a sense of entitlement, no accountability for the whoppers that are being told, and it achieves. In some instances it gets the control, but it always gets all of that lovely fuel. And where the people challenge her, her narcissism then just deals with that in the next moment by asserting control either indirectly or by going to a position of withdrawal. Of course, the problem with this is that it generates more and more outrage, which of course is fuel, but it means that ultimately the facade then comes under attack. But the narcissism principally doesn't care about that because fuel and control are much more important. Furthermore, although it will create instances where more and more people will start to disbelieve her, the narcissism isn't thinking about what's coming next or in the future. It's only concerned about now. It's akin basically to deciding, I need some firewood, so I'm going to keep cutting down this forest without thinking, hang on a second, how's that going to impact upon the environment at a later juncture? Maybe I should start planting some trees. No, so long as the wood is there to build the houses, to burn for fuel, then the trees will continue to be chopped down, chopped down, chopped down, until eventually a problem arises. But again, it'll be a case of, well, I'll just move on to a different forest now, having exhausted this one, and so on and so forth. Harry's wife's narcissism makes her tell lies. Harry's wife's narcissism makes her tell big whoppers. She's blind to this. I know many people struggle to accept that she doesn't understand that she's telling lies. But her narcissism blinds her to it because it has to be instantaneous and fast. It can't delay. It can't allow for hesitation. It has to be prompt. But she tells these lies because her narcissism compels her to do so in pursuit of the prime aims. And she will keep doing this. And this is why it will continue to cause her problems, because she's not an evolved narcissist that can tell subtle lies, or plausible lies, or tell a lie and then be able to backtrack from it. She repeatedly gets caught out, but her style of narcissism simply does not care about it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.